Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to go through calculations involving the solubility product, or KSP. So we've introduced this idea of the solubility product, or KSP, as, a, as something that describes the equilibrium for really sparingly soluble ionic compounds. We're now going to look at how do we calculate KSP? How do we use the KSP values to calculate how much dissolves the molar solubility? Looking at um, how we can predict the formation of a precipitate using something called the ionic product, comparing the difference or the similarity between solubility and KSP, and then looking at how we can convert between those two values. So we've got like around five or six different sample calculations that I'm going to walk you through here. So this first one, silver chloride's got a molar solubility of 1.34 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per litre at this particular temperature. So that means that 1.34 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of silver chloride will dissolve in every litre of water at this temperature. Calculate the KSP for silver chloride at this temperature. Now one thing you have to be careful of is that that means moles of silver chloride as a whole compound. We need to then be able to work from the whole compound to its ions. Okay, so we see that for every one silver chloride, we make one silver and one chloride. That's going to be relevant um, and makes things simpler in this situation. Okay, so um, I should say 1.34, a little typo there. Okay, that then, actually no, it should say, this should say 1.33, sorry. So what we're saying is then, you know, 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of silver chloride dissolves, so we make equal numbers of moles of both silver and chloride. So it's 1 to 1 to 1. So that means our silver and chloride concentrations are also 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5. We write our KSP expression, a silver times our chloride, we substitute in, and we get a KSP value 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10. So that's our KSP at this temperature. So it's a really small value. It means that silver chloride, almost all of it is solid, only a tiny fraction of it is these ions um, that are dissolved. So then how do we work backwards? How do we go from a KSP value to work out molar solubility? Okay, so zinc hydroxide, KSP, 3.8 times 10 to the minus 17. Calculate the molar solubility at this temperature. Okay, so this is the equation that we have. Okay, one zinc hydroxide forms one zinc but two hydroxide ions. Okay, so let's say that we're going to form X amounts of this and two X amounts of that. So now what we can do is we can put our KSP expression together, but we're going to substitute in our, our unknown values, our x and 2x, where we have here. So what we have, we've got 3.8, our KSP value is equal to x times 2x all squared, so 4x cubed, once we expand that out, equals this number. We divide by 4, we do take the cube root, we get x is equal to 2.12 times 10 to the minus 6. So therefore, we make the final statement saying the molar solubility of zinc hydroxide is 2.12 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per, per litre. Okay, so we've worked backwards from a KSP to the concentration molar solubility values to get the answer that we're after. So we can see that those calculations go one way or the other. Now, we're going to look at saying how we can use this KSP number to predict whether a precipitate is going to form for a particular solution. So we have looked at in the past this idea of using Q the reaction quotient to predict whether you know a system's at equilibrium, whether it will shift in the forwards or reverse direction in order to reach equilibrium. We can do the same thing for this type of an equilibrium. We just we call it something slightly different. Instead of Q, we call it the ionic product because we're dealing with ions specifically, not just a general kind of reaction quotient. Okay, so ionic product is the label we're going to use for the next little bit. Okay, so. When we have, when the product of our ion concentrations, which is our ionic product, is equal to the KSP, the solution is saturated and it's in equilibrium. Okay, so that's when Q equals K, we've talked about in the past. So when the ionic product equals K, we're at equilibrium, we are saturated. No more will dissolve, the maximum is reached. Okay, so if we look at our silver chloride, okay, so if we have a situation where our silver and our chloride are equal to 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per litre, then this is our ionic product expression. So it's just like we'd work out KSP. We times those together. We get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10, or 1.77, if we didn't round it so much, which equals our KSP value. So therefore, we can say the solution is at equilibrium. When we have these values, we're at equilibrium. Okay? But then we can say, well, what if the, the ionic product is not equal to K? So if it's less than, it's not saturated. 
we're not going to get any precipitation. Okay, so we've got less, fewer ions in solution than we could to reach equilibrium. Okay, so we could add more, um, you know, more can dissolve in order to be able to do that. Okay, when we are at equal, the solution is saturated, it's at equilibrium, no precipitation, no, no extra precipitation will happen or dissolve. If the ionic product, if we have more ions dissolved in solution than the KSP, then it's super, we say it's super saturated. It is as too much dissolved in solution and precipitation will occur until the ion concentration is dropped back down to satisfy the KSP expression. So it's like saying if, we, if Q is too high, we go backwards to reach K. Q is too low, we go forwards to up to reach K. Same sort of thing here. If ionic product's too high, we'll go backwards, we will precipitate out to reach K. If it's too low, then more can dissolve to reach that level, we, to reach our saturation point. Okay, so let's say we have a situation where we've got these values of silver and chloride concentrations in a solution. Then we can ask ourselves, will a precipitate of, of silver chloride occur? We've got a KSP value that we can either given in this question or you could look up from the data table or somewhere like that. We calculate the ionic product, we get 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10. And now we're looking at this value compared to that value and we see it's larger. So since the ionic product is greater than KSP, yes, precipitation will occur in order to bring the concentrations back down. Okay, it's going to reduce those ion concentrations till we reach equilibrium saturation point again. Okay, let's look at solubility and KSP because they're very similar labels, solubility, solubility product, but they don't mean the same thing. So solubility is the quantity that dissolves in a given amount of water. Okay, um, now it is possible, so we talked about it being reported in moles per litre or grams per litre. It's not the same as the solubility product, but we can convert between the two things. Okay, so we can do calculations to say, all right, well, this is how much dissolves, what's its KSP? Or this is its KSP, how much will be dissolving in grams per litre or moles per litre? We looked at it in terms of molar solubility, but we can also work the other way. I'm going to show you how that would look. So KSP for calcium fluoride, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11. How much, what's its solubility in grams per litre? This is our equation. So for every one calcium fluoride, we make one calcium, two fluoride ions. Okay, you've got to keep that in mind. Okay, so for X moles that dissolves, we produce X moles of calcium, two X moles of fluoride ions. So we've got a KSP expression. We can solve for the molar solubility. Okay, whenever you're trying to work it out in grams per litre, you've got to work it out in moles, molar solubility first. If we were going the other way, um, we do the same thing. We convert the solubility to a moles per litre and then go from there. Okay, so to get from moles per litre to grams per litre, we're going to multiply by the molar mass of calcium fluoride. Okay, so for every 2.14 times 10 to the minus 4 moles that will dissolve, we have 1.67 times 10 to the minus 2 grams per litre, or 0 0.0167 grams for every litre. So it's very low that, you know, we're, we're talking about that, you know, sparingly soluble compounds. But now we have the ability to actually translate between the equilibrium constant, KSP, and an actual mass measurement we could measure out. You know, if we wanted to determine how much we could actually fit in that solution, then we can use this approach. Okay, so we looked at how we can do calculations involving KSP. We looked at how we can calculate it from molar solubility or the other way around. We looked at how we can use the ionic product, which is this particular version of Q, to predict whether a precipitate's going to happen for a solution. Are we concentrations too high so it will precipitate? Are the concentrations too low so more could dissolve? Or are we at equilibrium in which we've reached the limit? We looked at the difference between solubility and KSP. They're related ideas, but they're not the same idea. And we showed how that you can use a calculation to convert between the two. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.